twenty wines of the mid-range narcissist. Those of you that are now regular listeners will understand that I categorise narcissists into different schools. The reason that this is done is to enable you to understand the similarities between all narcissists, but also a variety of differences. And that is, for instance, why I do not like the term covert narcissist, because it's too broad. Covert behaviours, absolutely accurate, but to utilise the term covert narcissist is far too broad and is thus misleading. It is far better to provide more detailed classifications to help you understand both the similarities and variances between different narcissists. You'll be aware that I divide into four schools, lesser, mid-range, greater and ultra, and then lesser, mid-range and greater are further subdivided. This video appertains to 20 wines of the mid-range narcissist. Mid-range narcissists come in four subschools. Lower mid-range, which is an amalgam of lesser traits and mid-range ones, sitting just about within the mid-range category, but showing plenty of glimpses and behaviours of the lesser narcissist. Middle mid-range narcissists. These are the ones which are often very difficult to spot. These are the individuals that believe that they are truly empathic individuals, that they go around helping people. And these are categorized further into middle-middle range type A, of which there is the anodyne, vanilla individual, and also the overwhelming angel, the individual that is believes themselves to be hugely helpful, but interferes tells people how they should live their lives, done so under the auspices of, I was just trying to help. And then the middle, middle range type B, the crybabies, the ones that think that the universe has cursed them and the world is against them. The middle, mid rangers are hugely passive aggressive, operate extensive facades based primarily on being helpful and caring individuals. Upper mid rangers have plenty of behaviours, naturally, of the mid-ranger, but they have more drive about them, more polish, more arrogance. They tend to be haughtier, and with apparent justification, a lower mid-range narcissist can be haughty, but it's not actually based on anything. An upper mid-ranger gets away with it more readily on the basis that the haughty behaviours that are exhibited, well, people look and say, yes, he was dismissive, um, saying that my thesis wasn't particularly good, and although he could have said it to me in a more pleasant way, he is a very educated and intelligent man. And therefore, the victim views the haughtiness as unpleasant, but understands that it is predicated on something. Within this mid-range category, they have a particularly acute sense of being the victim. Although this may not consciously manifest, it is demonstrated in the ways that the mid-range narcissists behave, and none more so than the things that they say. Speech, of course, from a narcissist is a go-to manipulation. It's fast, it's cheap, it's easy to use, and, of course, as soon as it is said, it evaporates into the ether, allowing the narcissist to then deny with conviction that it was ever said and that prove it, prove that that was said. Your memory is incorrect. I never said it. You're recalling it incorrectly. And therefore it suits mid-range narcissists to come out with particular comments, which of course are manipulations. There are many things that mid-rangers say that evidence their particularly acute victim mentality. And when these are being said, it is to assert control over you, to nullify your threat to the mid-range narcissist control and to draw fuel from you. Here are 20 wines of the mid-range narcissist. Number one, 
you make my life so difficult. Accusatory, blame shifting, and would be said by all subschools of mid range narcissist. Number two, why are you treating me like this? Accusatory, blame shifting, potentially a pity play also. Middle mid rangers would use it more as a pity play, lower mid range also. Upper mid rangers, less as a pity play, although it might be done that way, are more likely as a demand for you to explain yourself, to be accountable to the narcissist. Number three, you never try to understand me. Accusatory, potentially a pity play, also. Provocation and a put down, suggesting that you're not making the effort. Of course, it will invariably be a lie. Note also the use of never, the absolute terms of the black and white that the narcissist operates in. Again, all subschools of mid range would utilize this. Number four, what about me? Sense of entitlement, demanding, provocative. It might be done as a pity play, dependent on the tone, and again would be said by all subschools. Number five, what am I going to do now? Again, this would be utilized by all subschools. More likely, as a pity play for lower mid range, middle mid range A, and middle mid range B, and in a dismissive, haughty manner when associated with the upper mid range narcissist. Number six, how's that supposed to make me feel? Accusatory, provocation, pity play. Used in a haughty manner and a pity play by low mid range, more as a pity play by middle middle range A and B, and as a haughty dismissive question by upper mid range. Number seven, you are meant to look after me. Sense of entitlement, lack of emotional empathy, demanding, provocative. Pity play, more usually in the hands of the middle middle range A and B, potentially also lower mid range, more in a haughty and dismissive declaration when issued by the upper mid-range. 8. It's not my fault. Lack of accountability. Potentially a pity play, as in I can't help the way that I am. By expressing the belief of it's not my fault, this underpins the narcissist's attempt to assert control by suggesting that they are not at fault. It would be used in a dismissive, grumpy way by a lower mid-range, a more whining, pitiful manner by a middle-middle range type A or type B, and with regard to the upper mid-range in a dismissive way. A statement, a declaration, something that is not to be debated or discussed. Number nine. I can't help the way I am. Blame shifting. Rejection of accountability. 10. Why must you be so difficult with me over this? More used as a pity play by middle middle range A and B. And with regard to lower mid range and upper mid range, more in a haughty, provocative manner. 11. You never listen to me invariably utilized as a statement, an accusation, a provocation by all subschools. You always make it about you, never about me. Again, the use of the absolutes, always and never. And as assertion, a statement by the upper mid-ranger in a haughty and defensive manner, a complaining manner, middle middle range A or B, more likely to whine about it by way of a pity play. 13. You never do what I want. Again, set in absolute terms of you never. Pity play. Haughty dismissiveness. 14. You don't love me like you should. Sense of entitlement. Put down. Provocation. 15. You never do what I want. Pity play. Provocative, 
Dismissive and haughty. Use of the absolute term of never. 16. You never let me speak. Sense of entitlement. Use of the absolute of never. Pity play. 17. You always treat me like a fool. Provocation. Pity play. Use of the absolute in utilizing always. 18. You are the reason for all of my problems. Accusatory. Blame shifting. Pity play. Oh, woe is me. Martyr. 19. You are trying to ruin my life. Projection. Blame shifting. Provocation. Pity play. 20. Why do you do this to me? Projection. Provocation. Blame shifting. And pity play. These 20 wines of the mid-range narcissist are all the complaints, all the moaning about their situation. Sometimes it is done in a very obvious, abject way of believing that they are entirely hard done to. Other times it is a dismissive complaint, a put down. But either way, it is a wine of the mid-range narcissist that is being done to achieve the prime aims of control, fuel, character traits and residual benefits. It's important to understand that because this is a mid-range narcissist, this is being driven by unconscious behaviours. And this causes the mid-range narcissist to truly believe that they are being hard done to, that their life is actually being ruined, even if you were to present evidence to the contrary to demonstrate that not only is the behaviour that they are complaining of not something that you have done, but you also point to many other things that show that you are far from ruining the life of the narcissist. You're adding to it in a positive way. Remember, in that moment, you're painted black. Your responses will threaten the narcissist's control and they will be rejected. And that's why it is utterly pointless trying to say to a narcissist, not only are you wrong about what you're accusing me of, but in general terms, how can it be that I'm ruining your life? Look at all of the things that I do for you. That will fall on deaf ears because it threatens the narcissist's control and must be rejected. These are common complaints, common whines, common put-downs of the mid-range narcissist, and it is important to recognise them and understand that they are manipulations. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.